Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Skills and Abilities. So today we're going to be looking at the last of the ice spells. We've covered every single one so far, with the exception of Frozen Orb. Uh, Frozen Orb is definitely one of the most loved abilities on this tree. And let's go ahead and reset our character real quick so we can get a little bit uh, better build with this particular ability. Now, uh, Frozen Orb is an ability that does need to be gone over a little bit. Um, it is not a straightforward ability. It does have some very interesting mechanics, and, uh, and as we go over it, you guys will start to understand what the hell's going on with this ability. Um, at first glance, when you use Frozen Orb for the first time, um, you will see that it seems to have multiple components. Um, it is not just simply one ability, it is multiple abilities. Um, it seems to have number one, the addition of ice bolts so the ice bolt ability is actually right here um, and that ice bolt ability is definitely being fired off by the frozen orb and not only does the frozen orb ability shoot out the ice bolts it also shoots out a central orb uh, and the central orb is also of course shooting out ice bolts uh, that are also coming out in a nova at the end um, and there's a lot going on here. I mean, we have the bolts themselves that are coming out as the orb travels. Then we have the nova, which is coming out from the explosion once the orb is finished. Um, essentially, the orb is composed of, you know, like a huge number of ice bolts. How many ice bolts are being shot? Well, that is actually a quantifiable thing. It is actually 46 total bolts. Um, and that is, of course, not going to ever be possible to hit a single target with. You're never going to be able to hit a single target with all 25. Um, however, um, you can hit a target with the majority of them. And, uh, and that is something that we can go over. Um, now, the damage on, on Frozen Orb is actually pretty pathetic looking, um, especially when you look at it unobjectively. Uh, 161 to 171 seems absolutely garbage compared to a lot of other abilities. But as we go over it and we talk about like how Frozen Orb works, how the damage is calculated, you'll get a better idea of why Frozen Orb actually does a pretty significant amount of damage. Now, Frozen Orb only has one synergy, and that is Ice Bolt. And you don't even necessarily need to build it because it's only an extra 40% damage. Or rather, not even 40% because you have to put at least one ability um, one point into Ice Bolt to reach Frozen Orb. So instead of it being 40%, it's uh, 38%. Um, literally from dumping 19 more points into Ice Bolt. Um, you're definitely going to want Cold Mastery, though, just simply because Cold Mastery is going to break those resistances. And uh, especially with the new Sunder Charms coming um, and the ability to break Cold Immunes for the first time ever, you're probably going to be maxing out Cold Mastery unless you have a really large amount of negative enemy cold resistance, usually in the form of uh, cold facets. And um, so right now you'll notice that we have a total of 430 to 450 cold damage. At cold length of 38 seconds and a pretty high mana cost of 40. Now the mana cost doesn't usually matter that much because the skill is delayed, so you can't actually spam it. Um, and this means that um, you don't burn mana as quickly as you would with something like Glacial Spike or Ice Blast because uh, you can spam those much, 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 much faster. And speaking of spamming them, um, that also something that we need to go over really quickly is um, does faster cast actually increase the duration of this ability? Well, the answer is yes, it does. Uh, so the delay of Frozen Orb is only one second. Uh, so we're going to have to edit this. This was the calculation for Blizzard. Uh, so one second is 25 frames. Um, and then we have to add in our casting speed. So if we were a zero faster cast sorceress with 13 frames, uh, we would have 13 plus 25, uh, which equals, what, uh, 35, uh, so 38 frames uh, in total. Uh, if we were a 200% FCR sorceress, we would have 7 frames, which is a very fast faster cast. Uh, plus 25, so 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, right? So we have 32. Um, as you can see, we do get faster by increasing. 
our faster cast, but not by much. Um, it's going to give us a small bonus of essentially what um, six, seven, eight, so six frames exactly as it's written up there. So we get six frames faster, um, and we go from 32 frames or 38 frames to 32, which isn't really going to be that big of a difference in the long or in the short term. But in the long term, it actually does add up to a lot of extra casts of Frozen Orb, you know, over like an entire game's worth of casting. But you're not really going to specifically notice it, like, right off the bat. Um, and uh, quite honestly, when you're casting something like Frozen Orb, Faster Cast isn't extremely important. I wouldn't, like, go all out with Faster Cast when it comes to Frozen Orb. Now, you probably want to build something else along with Frozen Orb, whatever that happens to be. Um, you know, maybe you're doing a Blizzard Orb Sorceress, or maybe you're doing a Fireball Orb Sorceress, or a Lightning Orb Sorceress, or whatever the hell that you're doing. Um, you're going to have something else along with the ability. Um, let's talk about the damage for a second here, uh, because it is a rather complicated topic. And uh, we're going to go ahead and beef up uh, the Ice Bolt Synergy so we get this to its maximum, which is 590 to 618 per bolt. Now, I'm going to have to bring up a calculator for this, because this is definitely uh, one of the more complicated skills in the game, especially in terms of uh, how many bolts can hit a target um, and a lot of other interesting mechanics, uh, because it's not a very um, easy skill to figure out exactly how much damage you're doing. In fact, a lot of the times um, when you're casting this, you honestly, you don't even really know what the hell's going on, because it would take some sort of math genius um, with like photo recognition skills to be able to pull off that kind of a thing. Wow, that is really cool. What's going on with my doojang there? Can you guys see that with the calculator? That's really cool looking. I have no idea what the hell that is about, but it's cool. Um, so let's take our ice, our frozen orb, which is uh, 618. Uh, so we're going to add together 590, and then we're going to uh, add that to 618. Um, and the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to get the average. So our average damage is going to be the addition of both of them divided by 2, uh, which is, of course, going to give us 604. So that is our average damage for our Frozen Orb right now at level 31 with max energy. Um, we can multiply that by 2 because there's a very good chance that we're going to be attacking a target that is at negative 100% cold resistance. Um, and uh, that is, of course, in due to the cold mastery. So we are now looking at... Um, 1,208 is our average damage per bolt. Not per frozen orb, per bolt. Um, and how many bolts do we have? Well, the number of bolts that frozen orb emits is 46. So there's a total number of bolts of 46. So we can multiply that by 46, and we have a total potential damage of 50,568. So 55,568 damage per frozen orb. Now, the problem with this... The problem with this is that you can't actually hit a target with all 46 of the bolts. Um, the maximum feasible number, as far as I am aware, um, is... I want to say it's 16... Let me double check my my uh, math here. Mm. See, it, it also depends on the size of the monster as well. So if you guys are unaware of this, there are different classes for monsters. So there's a class 3 monster, which is something like a Pit Lord. There's a class 2 monster, which is something like a, a Fallen. And then there's a class 1 monster, which is something like a... Uh, you know, like the demon imps. And um, and in general, like, it depends on how big the monster is, on how many times you can actually hit them. But um, let's say, on average, the maximum number of times that you can feasibly hit a target is... looks to be about 16. Uh, so 16 seems to be about the maximum that you can hit a single target with. And I could be wrong on that. Feel free to uh, correct me. But um, as you can see, if we were to multiply that original number, 1,208, by 16 instead, 
Uh, so 1,208 times 16, we end up with 19,328. So a much lower number than the original. Um, there's also more going on here that needs to be calculated. So for instance, with something like, I don't know, Frost Nova, you can hit every single target within range, right? So if you were 300 monsters next to you, and you cast Frost Nova, you would hit all 300 monsters, right? So I can hit everything within that radius. Uh, with Frozen Orb, it doesn't quite work that way. So the projectiles, the cold or the ice bolts that come out of the target, they do not pierce. Um, once they hit a target, they are done. They they collapse into nothingness, and they will hit no more targets after that particular point. Which means that the more targets that you fight with Frozen Orb, the less damage Frozen Orb does, uh, because Frozen Orb is, of course, wasting the majority of its ice bolts on, like, a spread out array of monsters. Um, now, granted, in smaller groups, Frozen Orb can do particularly well because less of it is getting wasted and more of it is actually hitting the targets. Um, but it also has issues, you know, if you don't cast it in the right area. So you need to make sure that the Nova is actually going through the target. Um, also, having the Nova specifically collapse on a specific target can ensure that that Nova will do more damage to a specific monster. Now, these Spike Fiends over here are only um, Class 1 monsters, so they're the smallest monster in the game. And because they're the smallest monster in the game, they get hit by the least number of orbs, probably around, like, 5. Um... Nowhere near as much as the larger class monsters in the game, which is uh, a little bit more, obviously. Uh, and, uh, and and it's just, in general, with this particular ability, it has its strengths and weaknesses. Um, its strength is that it can do considerably high amounts of single-target damage if applied correctly. Um, its weakness is that in very large groups, it gets eaten up and spread out almost like a necromancer applying, you know, a huge army to another huge army. All your skeletons are spread out, every single skeleton is attacking a different target, and your damage is, of course, spread out like not enough butter on too much bread. And, uh, and so Frozen Orb has this very interesting mechanic where you kind of like have to actually have like a little mini game with yourself on getting it to, um, you know, cast it in the correct locations, uh, making sure that the orb travels through the monster that you're trying to attack, making sure you're hitting from the right distance. Um, oftentimes you will find that if you are too close to the target, um, you will encounter a lot of problems trying to get the damage off because the frost nova or the, the nova ends up going off way past them. So if you're too close to the target, the Nova ends up going off behind them, and much of it ends up getting wasted. Um, and so there's a lot going on with Nova where you're trying to make sure that you're getting the... Sorry, uh, <laughs> orb, frozen orb, where you're trying to make sure that the placement of the frost... No, the, the, the ice bolt Nova, I think would be more accurate. The ice bolt Nova goes off in the right place. Like, for instance, if I could make sure that it goes off directly in this guy's face... That is the correct distance. Um, you actually want the orb to expire essentially directly inside of the monster that you're trying to attack, um, which is how you get that Nova to hit as many times as possible. And um, of course, they're going to be moving, uh, which is going to affect the damage output. Um, the moving is actually a good thing, believe it or not, because it does actually affect how much, how many times they can hit because they can effectively m get hit by one and move into another um, as it's traveling, because Frozen Orb is not actually particularly that fast. And um, all in all, Frozen Orb is definitely a very beautiful ability that does some pretty nice damage. Uh, it does have some pretty serious drawbacks, but um, all in all, it, uh, it works effectively in a large number of builds. And the reason why it works effectively in a large number of builds is because of the extremely small amount of points that it's required to really make this ability work. You actually don't even need the synergy for Ice Bolt, not really. Um, and uh, you can pretty much get away with 20 points in Cold Mastery and 20 points in Frozen Orb. Um, now before the Sunder Charms, you could even bring Cold Mastery down 
lower than this so that you didn't have to uh, to worry about it because you really didn't need that much cold mastery. You only needed just enough to counter uh, monsters that were not immune. And um, and that was a lot easier. However, with the Sunder Charm, you're going to have to counter 95% cold resistance on the monsters that are Sundered. And uh, that means you're going to need negative 195% enemy cold resistance to reach that wonderful, wonderful negative 100% increase. And uh, so if you are going to be running Frozen Orb in the future with a Sundered Charm, you may want to think about actually maxing out Cold Mastery or combining it with other things like Cold Facets, which would also, in fact, increase your negative enemy cold resistance. Um, Frozen Orb works really good with alternative builds as well. So if you're building like a Fireball Sorceress, a Lightning Sorceress, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things in here. Like you can do Firewall Orb, you can do Fireball Orb. You can do Hydra Orb, you can do Lightning, Chain Lightning Orb. Um, you can even do like Glacial Spike Orb or Blizzard Orb also actually works, believe it or not. You can combine the two most overpowered spells in the game. Um, and until recently, you know, focusing specifically on the Cold Tree wasn't exactly like the best idea. Because you would often run into these Cold Immune Monsters that you could not kill. Um, but the Sunder Charm, of course, changes all that. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to go over when it comes to Frozen Orb. Um, there is an issue in which if Frozen Orb hits an obstacle, um, it will be destroyed upon collision. Uh, so let's uh, show that real quick. I'm trying to think where there's a good obstacle. Uh, let's just go to one of the easiest zones I can think of, which is Flare Jungle. There's obstacles all over the place in Flare Jungle. Um, and uh, basically, if your Frozen Orb hits a target, um, you are essentially nerfing your damage with this. So as you can tell, Frozen Orb emits bolts the entire duration until it explodes. So if you fire it, and it hits a wall or it hits an immovable object, it will immediately stop, it will be destroyed, and it will emit its last frost nova, or its, its uh, ice bolt nova, essentially. And, um, and this does have an issue, and I believe there's a couple things that go along with the expiring. Um, on Amazon Basin, it reads, Upon expiring, a nova of 16 bolts, also applying cold damage and cold length, is released. If this occurs when the orb is traveling through a target, the target can be hit by multiple bolts. Although these bolts are also size 1 and destroyed on collision, and all can hit a single size 3 target, bolts may still be displayed, even though they have been consumed, essentially. Um, and these bolts that are displayed will apply no cold damage or cold length. So despite the fact that it seems as if Frozen froze Orb is actually still emitting the cold you know, the bolts, um, it actually doesn't actually emit the bolts. Um, it's a, it's a bug within the game. So it's, it's basically still showing you the bolts, even though the bolts have been consumed. Um, and it's basically telling you that they do nothing. Um, also releasing, releases a Nova of 16 bolts upon hitting an em enemy or an obstacle. And these bolts also apply no damage or cold length. So when you hit those obstacles, it also does not apply damage. Um, so you have to make sure that your frozen orb is not coming in contact with a bunch of random obstacles. Um, granted, the uh, the bolts that come out before it hits the obstacle will still hit the target, but the ones that come out after you hit the obstacle do nothing. Um, if I shoot off. Well, let me see if I can grab a monster over here. Come here, buddy. And I stand directly in front of the wall, and I shoot it directly into the wall. You notice how it's not hitting him? So if I'm directly against the wall, and I hit it right on, he doesn't get hit. But if I'm off by even just a little bit, of course, it's shooting off these little tiny ones, which, of course, can also hit the target. But it's a big waste to have your frozen orb hit a obstacle, because the obstacle is, of course, you know, ruining the amount of damage that that spell can possibly do. Um, 
I think that's pretty much it for this. I would like to go over the number items in the game that have Frozen Orb on them. So this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, there are items in the game that have Frozen Orb, and Frozen Orb is one of the unique abilities within the game that doesn't necessarily care whether or not you have synergies. As we talked about earlier, you don't necessarily even need the Ice Bolt synergy for Frozen Orb to be useful, which means that anybody can get good use out of Frozen Orb, even if they're not a sorceress. So we have uh, several items in the game that have frozen orb charges, and uh, the first one is the Sure Shrill Frost Flanged Maze, which is a relatively low-level unique item, um, and uh, it has level 9 charges with 50 of them, and believe it or not, you can actually use Sure Shrill Frost Flanged Maze uh, on level to kill things with Blizzard on a non-sorceress, and it works surprisingly well. Um, a chance to cast item is level 21, 16% chance to cast the Rift Pole Armor Scepter. Uh, Rift is a actually a really popular item that is used specifically for spamming Frost Novas. And uh, Rift Sins are definitely a thing, and there are definitely other characters in the game that have gotten good use out of the Rift Pole, the Rift Rune Word. Uh, because level 21 Frost Frozen Orb is actually surprisingly powerful. Uh, we also have On Striking. Uh, on Striking is different than On Attack. On Attack does not require that you hit the target, so it's actually more potent. However, there are certain abilities in the game that it does not work with, so keep that in mind. Uh, on Striking, we have level 3 with a 5% chance of the Bing Z Wang Dacian Falks. Um, it's good for its level, but it falls off relatively quickly. Uh, we also have level 11 on the Chaos Claw with a 9% chance, which is actually pretty powerful. Um, and level 13 on Striking uh, with the Voice of Reason with a 15% chance, which is also pretty powerful. Uh, Voice of Reason and Rift are actually two items that are interchangeable in a lot of those uh, like Rift Sin builds. And uh, a lot of Rift Sins uh, will use a Voice of Reason before they get access to the Rift. And even some of them will flip flop back and forth between them because they have both have their positives and negatives. Uh, Voice of Reason, from what I remember, has the very nice negative enemy cold resistance, which does up the damage quite considerably, whereas the uh, Rift, I don't believe, has that. Um, and, uh, and quite honestly, just having Frozen Orb on things like this is pretty powerful. As you can see, um, even with relatively no synergies, Frozen Orb can still be a powerful skill for well, just about anybody. Um, this is definitely one of the most popular spells, I think, in the game, and uh, and I, I think I think quite honestly, it might be the one that's the most cast in the entire game. Um, maybe maybe with exception to teleport. I think teleport might be I might edge it out a little bit, but if we're talking about like just specifically the sorceress and specifically like attack spells. Uh, Frozen Orb might win. Um, it does have a delay on it, but uh, it definitely is one of the most popular ones. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, even when it's 23 minutes on uh, the Frozen Orb skill. Uh, and as always, get out there and shoot out some freaking Frozen Orbs. I mean, come on. Get out there, shoot some Frozen Orbs, kill some monsters, and lament about your cold immunes until you get your Sunder Charm.